This video deals with rotation. We're going to discuss uh, how changing the distribution of mass will change the angular velocity and uh, talk about kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy for the, the system. So we have here a student on a frictionless uh, rotating platform uh, holding the arms out so that the hands are 55 centimeters from the axis and in each hand there's a 3.8 kilogram mass. Um, we're not going, we don't have a table that calculates I, the rotational inertia for a person. So we're going to say, and this is a made up number, uh, the student has a rotational inertia of 4.8 kilograms meter squared, holding out the arms. Additionally, there's going to be rotational inertia due to the, each of the 3.8 kilogram masses. And someone has started this person spinning or the person pushed off from uh, a fixed anchor. Uh, the spin is uh, 0.52 radians per second. First, we calculate the total rotational kinetic energy. Well, to do this, we have to consider uh, that there are two parts to the rotational inertia. The I of uh, 1 half I omega squared. We need to get the total I for the system. So the total I is going to be made up of the person's the body rotational inertia, 4.8 kilogram meter squared, plus two masses that are 0.55 meters from the axis of rotation. So the I value for the mass, a single mass, is 3.8 times 0.55 squared. That's m r squared. m r squared is the formula. And there are two of those masses, so we have a factor of two in place here. But the mass times radius squared, that's the rotational inertia for one of the 3.8 kilogram masses. We find then that the total is uh, 2.3 as a result of the calculation of the two 3.8 kilogram masses. 2.3 plus the person's body, 4.8, gives us 7.1 kilograms meter squared. Putting now our information into 1 half I omega squared, we have the I value, 7.1. We have the given omega value, 0.52. We didn't have to change units here. If we would have been given revolutions per minute or uh, degrees per second, we would have to do some conversion. But uh, omega is proper here in radians per second. You should check this, multiply this out for yourself. And I came up with 0.96 joules for the kinetic energy. Well, the student uh, you know, is... Uh, able to move the mass a little bit. So the student pulls in the masses horizontally to the masses are just seven centimeters from the axis of rotation. And now the body's rotational inertia is different and also the rotational inertia of the masses will be different. So I'm just again picking a number here, 2.9 kilograms meters squared for rotational inertia of the person. And we again calculate the total uh, rotational inertia, 2.9 for the body, two of these masses, so 3.8 kilograms, and now only 0.07 meters from the axis, and that's a squared, so mr squared for each mass is being uh, calculated here, and now the total rotational inertia, 2.94. Notice that the rotational inertia of the masses has gone way down. We're at a much smaller r than we were before. So it has a big impact to r is squared in the calculation. So there's not much contribution to rotational inertia from the mass at this point. But we have an I value. We know that without friction, as we were told this is a frictionless platform, that angular momentum will be conserved. And there's no external torque. Uh, nobody pushing or pulling on the person that's rotating. So we have uh, the first angular momentum, I1 omega 1, will equal the second angular momentum, I2 omega 2. Omega is going to change because the I value is different. The I value is smaller, so we expect omega to be larger. So when I gets smaller, omega gets bigger. We have to maintain a fixed number of the starting angular momentum that's on the left side. So we calculate this, uh, 7.1 times 0.52, that was the omega. On the final case, we have 2.94 and omega 2. You should calculate this on your own uh, calculator. But, uh, I came up with 1.26 radians per second. And now, what is the new rotational kinetic energy? We have a new I and we have a new omega. 
We're still using one half i omega squared in this calculation, but both the i value and the omega value have different values. When we do the calculation, and you should again double check, um, 2.32 joules is the new kinetic energy. You may uh, observe up here that the rotational kinetic energy started at 0.96. Now we have more rotational kinetic energy. Is rotational kinetic energy a constant? No. So there must have been some work done someplace. What caused the change in the rotational kinetic energy? The person does work to pull the masses closer to the axis of rotation. The hand is applying a force to the, uh, to the masses. Um, and the mass it moves in the same direction as the force towards the axis of rotation. So the person did work, and that has increased the kinetic energy of the system. Well, you ought to do your own work, practice, and ask questions.